Ladies and gentlemen, this short video is just going to quickly outline some of the patterns on the last chart that we're going to use in our data booklet called the uh, reduction table. It shows all of the half reactions that is oxidation and reduction. I have a modified version of it at the top of your notes. Mine's nice and colorful. Yours isn't because we all know that it does not photocopy very well. So, it would be great if you had a copy of the reduction table in front of you. Uh, mine is going to be right here. I'm going to pretend that all of you have it, even though realistically none of you are probably staring at that. I am going to start with this, though. At least you'll be able to get to see what's going on. First off, you're going to see in the title, it's called Reduction Potentials. Everything on here is written left to right, how we read normally. They're written as reductions, which is gaining electrons. So this chart will help you right off the bat, dialing in what a reduction half reaction looks like. The very top line says F2 gas plus 2 electrons goes to 2F minus. First off, these are not equilibrium arrows. There's just trying to say that you can read it to the right or you can read it backwards to the left, but it's not an equilibrium arrow. The word potentials refer to the voltages uh, in this last column. We will talk about the voltages in a couple days. Now is not the time. I also want to point out the title of these columns. These are those tricky definitions that we've been working on the last couple days. These are oxidizing agents. You're going to notice that these oxidizing agents are above things that gain electrons because oxidizing agents are getting reduced. And these are your reducing agents. They are the things that are losing electrons and being oxidized. So all four definitions that we spoke about in the last two classes are defined for you here on this chart. Reductions are gaining electrons, oxidations are losing electrons, oxidizing agents are getting reduced, and reducing agents are getting oxidized. I also want to point out that there are two really big bold arrows up the side of your page and down the side of your page. If you read it, it says strength of oxidizing agents are increasing. So as you go up the left side of this table, the tendency to gain electrons increases and increases and increases. So F2 is the strongest oxidizing agent. It's the thing that's going to collect two electrons the easiest. And as you go down the chart, Li solid is way down there. It is the species that's going to lose electrons the easiest, according to this chart. I'm sure there's things that lose electrons easier, but they're not on this chart. Those bold arrows are going to answer half of the questions in the next couple of days. What's going to gain an electron first, second, third? Well, the strongest will, will gain it first. The weakest will gain it last. Which one's going to lose an electron first? Well, the lower on your chart, the stronger the thing is as a reducing agent, it's going to get oxidized first. That's going to sum, that's going to literally summarize most of the problems for the next couple of days. And I have that written in your notes that you can read on your own. Okay? Tomorrow in class you're going to just practice reading a couple things off your chart. For example, what's the reduction of Pb plus 2? Well, reduction means gaining electrons. Pb plus 2 is going to gain two electrons to form Pb solid. The opposite is oxidation. Pb plus so Pb solid is going to lose two electrons to form Pb plus 2. We're just going to practice looking stuff up on either side of the chart. You're going to notice that some things are on both sides. There's some tins on both sides, there's some irons on both sides, and there are some coppers on both sides. Okay. You're going to see very simple multiple choice questions like this. What's a stronger oxidizing agent? Well, you simply just look it up on your chart. Ag plus is higher on the chart than Ni plus 2. So it's going to be stronger. In regards to reducing agents, you simply need to look them up on the other side. Okay? Sn plus 2 or Fe plus 2, well, reducing agent Sn plus 2 must be lower on the right. It's going to lose its electrons first. Very simple questions and you'll dial those in. The next question you're going to see is deals with this word spontaneous. Some reactions happen on their own, and some reactions don't. If they react on their own, it means the two things are 
that are reacting want to lose an electron and want to gain an electron. So these boxes are unbelievably important. If the two things that you're looking up are situated like this on your standard reduction table, well then, yes, they are going to react spontaneously on their own. If they are situated like this on the reduction table, they're not going to react. Okay? So this is spontaneous, and this is non-spontaneous. Okay? Spawn, non-spawn. You're going to be doing that a lot over the next couple of days. And again, tomorrow in class, you can give this a quick read, see what it says, but that, that pattern there sums it all up. I want to point out copper is on there a bunch of times. Copper solids on there a couple times. Copper plus two is on there a couple times. And copper plus one is on there a couple of times. Copper plus one is strange. It is really unstable. And it's unstable, and what that means is copper plus one is actually situated like this, which means it's spontaneous. So you can't actually have a bucket filled with copper plus one ions. It's going to react with itself and form Cu solid and Cu plus 2. Copper plus 1 oxidizes and reduces itself. Questions like this, a little bit more complicated. Will Br2 oxidize Au solid? Well, first off, find Br2. Secondly, find Au solid. Let's do this one. Go to your table. Make this a little larger. Let's find Br2 and let's find AU solid. There's Br2, trust me, I've got good eyes. And there's AU solid. These are situated like this, so that's non-spontaneous. These will not react with each other. You have to be situated like this to react with each other. Back to the notes, we're almost done. Okay. You will fill those in as groups tomorrow. Some of these reactions on the table have an H plus in them, which means those are acids. So if you see acidified iodate in a question, what it really means is look for an H plus and IO3. Um, if you see acidified bromate, it really means look for an H plus BRO3 minus. So if the question has acidified in it, just look for the exact thing with an H plus. Also, the acids um, are broken up into their ions on this chart. So you're not going to see HNO3 on this chart, you're going to see it as NO3 and H+, and that is on there a couple times. In one reaction it makes NO, in the other reaction it makes N2O4. So again, you've got to see what reaction are they, they actually looking for you to look up. Um, sulfuric acid is SO4 and H+. Okay. Lastly, water. Um, I'm probably going to talk about water tomorrow in class, but I just want to point out now that water is on there four times. Um, two on the left side and two on the right side. It's on their um, neutral and acidic environments and neutral and basic environments. And we are going to shade those in. Um, so this is something I'll talk about tomorrow. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the general outline of this chart. Uh, you're going to be doing a lot of practice in groups and um, we'll, dial, we'll dial the patterns in. Uh, have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow in class.